PhD. The library was a building that you had to go into, flip through the card catalog, and then you had to ferret your way through the stacks to find the book that you wanted. And as long as some clown didn't put it back in the wrong location. The way we research now is totally different. And as a result, your ability to use online resources is perhaps one of the biggest keys to your success in seminary. In this video, what I want to do is introduce you to some of the online resources that Fuller has available for all students. While this doesn't replace Fuller's physical library, it can offer a very extensive form of research nonetheless. Now to get the most out of this video, I would recommend opening up your web browser to follow along with the links that I'm going to be talking about. And then watch some of the video, pause the video, and try and do what I just did in your own browser. In other words, if I'm searching for something, give that a try, experiment with it, because then you'll actually see how it works or if I've described it correctly or not. Now, when I moved to Colorado Springs in 1999, I felt like I was in a theological desert. I had to drive at least an hour or more to get access to a decent library. Since then, Fuller has really invested heavily in its online resources. And now you can actually do some pretty good uh, research online. On top of that, we're going to look at how you can actually get hold of materials that are not in electronic format through its online uh, databases as well. So the first thing we need to do is then go to fuller.edu and then using Fuller's homepage to access the library pages. And the easiest way to do that is to go to current students, the drop down menu, and then go to the library. When you first arrive at the library page, there's a lot of different options for doing research that are available to you. So let's start with the simplest and we'll move up from there. So let's say you're looking for a book on a particular topic. In this case, I'm going to use the resurrection of Jesus as our example. You may not know which book you're looking for, but you want to see what's available on a particular topic. So let's type in resurrection of Jesus in the search window right there. This then brings up our search results. And the first thing you'll notice that is that it brought up over 25,000 hits. Let's not worry too much about that number right now, but it just lets us know that there's a lot of information available we can look at. We get that large number of books because this is perhaps the most unfiltered, it's just collecting a lot of aggregate data for us. But let's just see how this works. If we could click on the first book by James Orr, we're given information about this book. First, it's a print book and it's in Fuller's library. We can also know that this book is also held at the Texas campus. But we can see its call number so we could locate it if we lived in the Houston area and went to that library. But let's say you don't live near Pasadena or Houston. You can then enter your zip code in the library's worldwide window and you can see if that's available anywhere near you. So I'm going to type in 80903, one of the zip codes for Colorado Springs, and I can see that this book is available at the Iliff Library in Denver. Now that's much better for me than the Pasadena Library. It's only about an hour's drive away. Now, while this searching for information in the libraries worldwide is useful, it's primarily looking at American universities. This is one of these American things, you know, like where we say something's the World Series, but it's only being played in the continental United States. But even if you're located internationally, I would give this a try because who knows, it might show up something in a library uh, within your region. It really depends on whether those libraries subscribe to sort of the uh, Library of Congress or other databases in the United States to have information like this. Now, while we're here, there's also two other important things to look at. First is the description button underneath the title here. This is going to give you sort of the card catalog information of the book. But in a lot of cases, it's going to give you a lot more detailed information. It could give you uh, a paragraph blog about the book. It could give you the table of contents. It can really give you a lot of great information there if this book is going to contain information that's useful to you. So let's go back to this book, The Resurrection Interdisciplinary Symposium, and click on View eBook. We now have two options for how we access that book. 
If you click the download button, it will open in a window that requires you to have an Abesco account. And you can sign up right there. There's an option to sign up with, uh, for an Abesco account with your Fuller ID information. It's not going to cost you anything. If you've already gone through that step, then you can sign in. And now you can download the whole book. The advantage of that is you get the whole book. The disadvantage is, is that the publisher sets how long you have access to that. And it might be one week or it might be two months. But after that time frame, that file is no longer activated on your hard drive or your tablet. The other advantage to that is that depending on whether you're going to read on your computer, a Kindle, or an iPad, that download the full ebook version will allow you to read it in your different formats. And so it gives you some freedom and flexibility as to how you read and where you read it. The second option is that if you click on the left side of the screen, if you click on the PDF full text on the left side of the screen, you're going to get an option to download a portion of the book. Now, the whole thing here is you don't get the whole book. You only get part of it. But the key thing is you get to keep it. Just be sure to look in the top left corner and it will tell you how much of that book you can actually download. Normally this varies between 10 to 100 pages from that book and it remembers what you've downloaded for your entire time at Fuller. So if you find a book really useful and you're using it in multiple classes uh, over and over, you might hit that 100 page limit before you know it and you're going to end up buying the sucker. Now with the PDF full text option on the left side, I usually use that option because it allows me to jump straight to the chapter or the portion of the text I want. Now you're gonna to have to do a little bit of searching to figure out what you want out of that book. Okay, let's go back to our search results for the resurrection of Jesus. Uh, you might have to do the search again to, to bring up a clean page on that. But over on the left-hand side, you've got this format section there. And if you don't live near Fuller's main campus, you can click on the ebooks e only result. And now you'll notice that the search results drops from 25,000 hits down to 3,000. There's a lot less that's available to me, but I have access to it straight here on my computer. Now here's a little tip or uh, something that I've learned when using that uh, search window there. If I'm looking for commentaries, one of the easiest ways to find that is to type in the name of the book in the search bar. So if I'm looking for commentaries on Ephesians, uh, I would type that in. Now, because commentaries and the publishers usually start off with Ephesians, a commentary, a critical commentary, something like that, normally the commentaries are going to appear first in our search results. This is just because of the way the publishers uh, title the books. Now, you'll notice that when we go from all formats just down to ebooks, that really reduces the number of commentaries available by down to 10% of what I looked at before. And the reason for this is that many of the better commentary sets are not available in an electronic format. So you might find one that's really good, it's not available in an ebook format, and so you're going to have to use that libraries worldwide to see if it's available. Now let's say I want to look at that commentary by Marcus Bart on Ephesians. It's only available in print format, not e-format, so I use libraries worldwide. I type in 80903, and I find that Colorado College has, a, has this book in their collections. And it's only one mile from where I am. So now, even though that book's not available in e-book format, it's very accessible to me. Now, what if you want to take a slightly different approach in your research and you want to do some preliminary research to see what's available out there on a topic? A great collection of resources that are available electronically are the dictionary series that are published by InterVarsity. So what I do is I type in IVP for InterVarsity Press, IVP Dictionaries, and this brings up the search results for their dictionaries. Now, they've got a four-volume set on the New Testament, Dictionary of Jesus and the Gospels, Dictionary of Paul and his Letters, Dictionary of the Later New Testaments, and uh, Dictionary of Background to the New Testament. They have a seven-volume set on the Old Testament, and these are excellent. I highly recommend if you get a chance to buy them, and oftentimes uh, these are available in like Logos software or Acorn software, 
And so you, uh, you can purchase it through them. And believe it or not, they often put these on sale through those various software packages. So keep your eye open for that. They are well worth having, but I digress. Let's get back to the IVP series that are available through the library. Now I'm interested in looking at the resurrection of Jesus. So their dictionary that's going to help me the most is Dictionary of Jesus and the Gospels. It's about 800 page uh, dictionary on just topics related to Jesus and the, uh, and the Gospels. So I'm looking for information on the resurrection. So I can click on the download PDF on the right, on the left hand side, and scroll down and then click on R for resurrection. Now I can see that the IVP allows me to download 100 pages in book format from this uh, uh, PDF as well. Now I've cheated, and I already know that the article I want on the resurrection starts on page 774 and goes to 778. But you can simply find it by clicking on the letter R, it brings up all the material there that's listed on R, and then scroll down till you find it. But you can see that we have 13 to 14 pages on this topic, and that would give me a great introduction and overview to the resurrection of Jesus. Also, if I scroll down to page 788, I can see that the InterVarsity series includes a very extensive bibliography on this topic. Now, this is really important. A good academic level, hint, seminary resource should include references to where they got the information from. This is a great test for helping you decide if a book is worth using in your papers while you're at Fuller. This bibliography is going to help you know where you should go uh, to do further research. And at the same time, if you start seeing the same person or a book title mentioned in various bibliographies and references, then you have a pretty good idea that this is one of the definitive books on that topic and you should take a look at it as well. If you click on the left hand side on the R and then it'll pop up a little window and you can title, type in 774 and 788 in the beginning and ending and you can download just those 14 pages to your computer. If you go to the right and go through Abesco, you're going to have to sign in uh, and then you're going to get that book, but it's only going to be for a select period of time. And this is a big book, so it's going to take a while for you to download. Let's take a look at journal articles, because the searching for them is a little bit different. Fuller provides you with an excellent collection of databases for journal articles. So let's go back to the library's homepage, library.fuller.edu, and then click on the databases right there in the middle of the screen. You can scroll down once you go to that page and see all the different types of databases that Fuller pays a great deal of money to have access to. If you click on the details, the little blue bar underneath the, that database's title, you'll get a description of what that database contains and what it covers. So scroll down and click on ATLA, the American Theological Library Association, so ATLA, or ATLA, religion, covers 100 court journals in theology and biblical studies. And some of these journals, their holdings go back over 50 years. So you can actually get access on your computer to articles going dating back 50 years. In fact, I've seen some that go back 100 years. Now, if we go back to the top, we can limit our searches to theology. So scroll back up to the, uh, the top of the database window that we just clicked on. And we're going to click on Theology and Biblical Studies. So let's go back to the database window. So library.fuller.edu, hit Databases. And then right at the top, you get these little menu bars or buttons that you can press. And hit the one for Theology, Religion, and Biblical Studies. This is going to limit our search to those primary databases that focus on religion, theology, and biblical studies. Uh, that's not to limit what you have access to. You have access to all of them, and you might want to play around, do research in further areas. But right now, uh, our primary interest is probably going to be covered by the databases that this does. So Fuller then sort of filters the databases for you to that core collection that will look at that area. So we've clicked on theology and biblical studies. We can see the databases that's selected for us. 
So let's go and click on the ATLA Religion database again. And this brings up the search fields for that particular database. Now you notice you get three search fields at the top, and this allows you to get very, very specific. But for now, let's just kind of play around with doing some simple lines. So for the first line, we can type in the topic we want to search and limit it to all sorts of characteristics. So if you go to that little uh, drop-down menu to the right of the search bar, you can search for topic, author, date, field, time, all different types of things like that. But I'm going to keep it fairly generic and not limit it. Uh, so I'm going to start typing in resurrection. Now you notice immediately as I start typing in resurrection, it gives me suggestions on where to search. So I'm going to pick the one resurrection of Jesus. And when I click that, you'll notice that it immediately brings up for me 4,000 results, which is pretty impressive. But I'm in Colorado and not in Pasadena, so I don't have access to all the journals that are in the library there. So I'm going to go over to the left-hand side and I'm going to click on full text, which means I'm only looking for articles that I have full text access to on my computer. When I hit that little button on the side, now you notice that my search has dropped down to 1,500 results. And the little icons under the titles are going to tell us some important things. First off, where it says periodical. This lets you know that this is a journal article, which is what we're looking for right now. The second type are reviews. This tells us that this particular entry is a book review of the book that goes by the title up there. So I'm not interested in book reviews on Jesus and the uh, demise of death. I'm looking for articles that tell me about something. You can also, on the side over there, filter your results by journal articles or reviews. So you could just click journal articles and then none of those reviews would show up at all. For the results list as more full text options instead of periodical or journal, this will let you know what the interlibrary loan options are available for you there. If you click on one of those, you can see it's going to take you to a page where you can request an interlibrary loan for that text. Thor will then take your request and send it to the library that's listed there. And then when they get it, they will email it to you. However, this can take from one day to a couple of weeks. So plan ahead if you think this is a crucial crucial article or resource for you to do. Now let's take a look at a full text article. If we scroll down in my window, it's the 15th entry and it's titled A Vision of Divine Justice, The Resurrection of Jesus in Eastern Christian or Iconography by John Dominic Cresson. And then I go to the left and I click on full text of that. I get taken to an electronic form of that article which actually includes a gorgeous photographic reproduction of the icon that he's talking about in the article. Then what I do is I have a Mac, so I just do uh, Command Print, and it brings up the option, and I select Print to PDF, and I save that full text article directly to my hard drive. Let's go back to the first page for the ATLA Religion Database. You might have to hit your browser's refresh, or you might have to go to library.forward.edu, then databases, then Atla Religion. But go to that first home page for the Atla Religion database. A very, very helpful feature for you to know about that's easily overlooked is right above where it says Atla Religion, you've got a number of little menu options up there. And one says scriptures. If we click on that, it brings up a list of all the biblical and apocryphal books in the Bible. Now I'm interested in looking at the resurrection of Jesus. And in particular, let's use Matthew as an example. So I'm going to have to scroll through that list of all the scripture books to the fourth page, and then I get to Matthew. But I don't want to read everything in Matthew about this. So let's do hit Matthew expand, and when I do that, now I get a list of Matthew by chapters. I go to the second page and I get Matthew 28. So let's click there. So once I click on Matthew, I expand it. I go to the second page, I clicked on Matthew 20, chapter 28. Now also I find I've got 4,000 results 
that talk just about Matthew 28. But I want to get a little bit more specific. Say I'm looking at the Great Commission in Jesus' post-resurrection appearances. That starts in verse 18. So now I can hit Matthew 28, and then I can do expand again, and I can select verse 18. Now I see I've got 236 results that talk about Matthew 28, 18 in some way, shame, or form, format. And so I can scroll through that until I find the articles that interest me. Now there's a couple other features that I want to talk about that are associated with what Fuller has available for you online. Let's go back to the library homepage, library.fuller.edu. There's another feature that's very useful here, and that is search this site. It's up in the top left. And when you type something in there, you can type in sort of generic uh, search information, and it brings up helpful how to do type things in many cases. So you can type all kinds of questions there. But I think one that's really useful for students is how do you get access to a print version of a commentary when you don't live anywhere near Pasadena? And that brings up a great article on how to do this under the library, a lot of which we already covered. But there's a link at the bottom that says Library Services for Online Users. Now that looks kind of interesting, and if we click on it, it brings up the following page that tells you how to access these features for online users. And you'll notice it says if you live more than 30 miles from Fuller's main campus, you can request a book by Books by Mail or Scan on Demand. Books by Mail is just what it means. They will mail that book to you. Now the problem is it takes a while. And the second thing is you have to pay for it to get back there. So this can take money and some time. But the Scan on Demand feature I find more useful. They will scan portions of a book and email that to you. And once again, depending on how much they scan depends on how much the publisher allows them uh, to send to you. But this service is faster and it's cheaper. So to use this service, click on the Scan by Demand, and they have directions for how to go about doing that. The amazing thing about this is this only takes one to two days for you to get that in your uh, email inbox. So the biggest thing to realize about this service here, take note of this, is that there is no excuse for anyone in any class to say, I couldn't get access to such and such a book or resource. The only thing you need to do is realize you need to plan ahead because if you try and use this service on Saturday for a paper that's due Sunday night, you're not going to get it in time. You might have to order it Friday morning. The second thing I want to talk to you about, that's another service that Fuller has, is its writing center. Now, this isn't found within the li library homepages, but the way we get at it, I'll explain here in a second. But Fuller has an excellent service in its writing center that will help you with all aspects of writing a paper. So how do we go there? You're going to have to go to Fuller's homepage, fuller.edu, and then under Current Students, click on the Quad. And then uh, once you get to the Quad page, click on Student Life and click on the Writing Center. Now, when you click on the Writing Center's homepage, you can see that they have workshops for writing that you can take online, and these are a great deal. Usually, they charge a minimum fee of $20, $25 or something like that, but it would cost you several hundred dollars to take this sort of workshop outside of Fuller. You can also make appointments to talk about a particular paper you're writing. You can send a paper in and they'll look at it over and discuss it with you. And they even have access to Turabian's book, which is a, a manual style that Fuller uses for how to format your papers. Your, you need to know about Turabian. You need to know how to use Turabian because some professors tend to be real sticklers about that. Um, and if you are new to graduate studies, I highly recommend that you make use of Fuller's Writing Center for at least the first quarter or two while you're in seminary. This will really help bring you up to speed with your writing. And That's about it for now. I know there's a lot of information in this video, but once you start playing around with the library services, they'll really become second nature to you. And by the time you're done your studies, you'll be amazed at how fast you access this information and the type of information that you can get access to. 
When I went through school, I was telling you about that you actually had to go into a library and access the information. Libraries were set places and you need to be near an institution of higher learning to gain access to them. And the big uh, skill that you had to learn there was actually how to use the library services. Now with all this information online, I think one of the key skills that you need to learn is how to access the information electronically and then being able to filter down and find the right information for you. Making sure it's at the appropriate level for graduate level studies, but also making sure that you're getting good information on the topic you're looking at. And I've got some information on that when I talk about resources to use and study. But for right now, I hope this was a great introduction and overview for using the library databases.